case, terrific to be back in Adelaide with the South Australian Premier, Peter Malinowskis, the Deputy Premier, Susan Close, and Tony Zapier, uh, one of the local federal representatives whose constituents are going to get good, secure work as a result of our AUKUS commitments and the $2 billion that will be invested here in South Australia just across the forward estimates. But of course, over the years to come, many billions of dollars creating jobs, creating innovation, making the best of, of Australian uh, science, technology, innovation here in defence industries. Uh, this is an exciting project. AUKUS is the biggest single investment in Australia's defence capability in our history. And Osborne here will be at the epicentre of all that we do. South Australians building the most complex machinery known to mankind right here at Osborne in South Australia. It is a transformational moment for Australia, for South Australia and for our Defence Force, as well as, of course, our economy. One of the things that we say is that we're investing in our defence capability. We're also investing in our relationships in the region as well. But this isn't just about our defence. One of the things that advanced manufacturing does is it produces a multiplier just as the car industry had ramifications and benefits for Australia over many decades in the post-war period, uh, the vision of a, an advanced defence capability will have spin-off for manufacturing, spin-off for jobs right across the Australian economy, but particularly here in South Australia. This will create some 20,000 jobs directly over the next 30 years. It will strengthen Australia's national security and contribute to regional stability in response to the unprecedented regional challenges which we are facing. It's about building a future made in Australia by Australians with record investments in defence, in jobs and in infrastructure. And it's about delivering a superior capability after a decade of inaction and mismanagement. At its peak, up to 4,000 Australian workers will be employed to design and build the infrastructure for the new submarine construction yard here. A further four to five and a half thousand jobs will be created to build the nuclear powered submarines in South Australia when the program reaches its peak. I think this is a most exciting proposal. Uh, we have worked uh, in the 11 months since we've been in government to make sure that the benefit comes here in South Australia. And I want to thank my friend, the South Australian Premier, for the constructive approach to the relationship that we have. We've signed a memorandum of understanding to make sure that we maximise the benefit here in South Australia, but also, of course, the benefit to the nation. And this afternoon, we've had the opportunity to talk firsthand to the workforce here skilled workforce, fitters and turners, electrical engineers, machinists, who are all in secure, well-paid jobs. And that is one of the things that this is about, making sure that those jobs stay here in South Australia. We need that certainty. What we've done is provide certainty, not just for a year, not just for a term of government, but that certainty for decades going ahead, which will give confidence to the South Australian economy and I want to uh, thank the South Australian Government uh, for working with us on what is such an exciting project in the national interest. Well, thank you very much, Prime Minister. It's great to have you here in South Australia again, particularly here at Osborne. It's great to be also here with, of course, the Deputy Premier Susan, as well as Tony, the member for Macon. Um, there can be no doubt about the fact that the AUKUS opportunity of building nuclear submarines here in South Australia represents the greatest opportunity we've had in our state for the biggest step change in economic complexity that we've really seen in the nation's history, let alone South Australia's. Uh, up to five and a half thousand people employed directly right here in Osborne to build the most complex machines that have ever been built in human history. The size, 
and the scale of this enterprise cannot possibly be overstated. And South Australia is not just excited about that task, we're already gearing up for it. We understand, Prime Minister, that the opportunity that the federal government has provided South Australians actually also imposes a degree of responsibility on our state as a whole, including the state government, particularly around the development of workforce and skills. We, um, the opportunity today to be able to chat to people working on the full cycle docking project of the Collins class, to be able to speak to those tradies, men and women, uh, electrical trades, sheet metal fabrication trades, um, engineering trades, all of these we are going to require a lot more of in South Australia, but even at a greater level of skill, with even higher level qualifications to be able to work on the nuclear project. We're committed to delivering that workforce. And that's why we've got a program in South Australia for everything from three-year-old preschool to building brand new technical colleges at our schools, but also university amalgamation. All of this is a, a comprehensive program to make sure that we have the skills and the workforce that this massive, massive undertaking is going to require. Um, but Prime Minister, we are grateful for, for your leadership. South Australians uh, appreciate the size and the scale of the commitment that the federal government has made. It's a necessary commitment to our nation's defence, but it's an exciting opportunity for industrial advancement here in South Australia and the improved standard of living that can be realised from literally thousands upon thousands of workers on the back of that. It's going to be a big journey. There are going to be challenges, of course, of course the, um, the next decade, but we're up for every single one of those challenges and we're excited about it and we're getting on with the task. Thanks, Pete. We're happy to take questions. Well, well, one at a time. You're obviously here today, a vote of confidence for workers that the work will definitely go ahead in Adelaide when it's so far out into the never never. Well, you can see the work beginning right now. What's happening now is the preparations for it. The people upskilling, we're in discussions about how we make that happen. Brendan O'Connor as the skills minister, Jason Clare as the education minister. Uh, this is an enormous opportunity uh, for South Australia in particular. And we have confidence in South Australians. The former government had a defence minister who derided South Australians working at this facility, who had contempt for the workers here. I honour the workers here. Uh, they're making a difference to their state, to their nation, but also, of course, to their families, because one of the discussions that Peter and I had uh, with the workers who are working on the, the maintenance of the, the Collins class subs. There were a couple of people who were trained elsewhere and they've come here because the work is secure. They know that that's the case. So this is a big vote of confidence in South Australia. And just as at the height of World War II under uh, uh, the Curtin government, Ben Chipley was appointed the Minister for Post-War Reconstruction. How do we come out of it with a big project? And part of that, of course, was the automotive industry, uh, which South Australia played a critical role. Uh, we know that coming out of the pandemic, we need to look towards how does the, the nation build itself? And that's why uh, this visionary project is so important as well, and South Australia is front and centre. Yeah, look, we're, we're working all of those uh, details and issues through. Uh, we'll make announcements. Some things are worked through. We, we obviously, when it comes to our defence and national security issues, we make announcements at appropriate times. Uh, but I'm very confident that one of the things that isn't happening here is argy-bargy. What is happening here is that the national government is talking with the South Australian government on our common interest. Well, we're doing it, and already what you're seeing is uh, e expansion of uh, expertise in things like nuclear engineering and, and courses. Of course, we're looking at as well uh, with. Uh, Peter's vision of bringing together uh, the South Australian 
tertiary sector uh, will have real spin-offs, I think, as well, because what that will do is to increase the capacity to make sure uh, that we get people in the right place at the right time. The other thing that's happening already is that uh, we are stepping up with our AUKUS partners uh, the presence of Australian submariners and uh, experts, engineers and others are working uh, right now, today, in the United States and in the United Kingdom, so they get that experience as well. Uh, this is a well thought out plan. The visit as well that will step up, particularly after, 19, uh, after 2027, but between now and then we'll have an increase in visits, visitation. Uh, here in Australia, but after then as well, we'll have a cycle through where where uh, US and UK submarines are present here for a considerably longer period of time than has happened in the past. And that is also about how you skill up the workforce. And then of course, uh, the purchase of Virginia class submarines uh, that will make a difference as well from the early 2030s uh, before we see the SSN AUKUS uh, being produced. Uh, the first ones will roll off the assembly line in the UK, but very soon after uh, roll off here as well. Uh, I pay tribute to Richard Miles, uh, the job that he has done, and Pat Conroy, uh, but also our alliance partners in the United States and the United Kingdom for the work that, that has been done at uh, the defence level. Prime Minister, can I ask you how you reflect on is one of the greatest of Australians. Uh, not just an extraordinary leader of uh, the Yulnu people and Indigenous Australians, but all Australians. He's a former uh, Australian of the year. Uh, he is someone who was a uh, confidant and spoke with every Prime Minister from Billy McMahon all the way through uh, to myself. Uh, when I met with him at the Gama Festival in July last year, when I committed the government to holding a referendum, uh, he asked me at that point in time, are you serious? because he'd been let down uh, so many times in the past. And I regard it as a great honour when uh, his family reached out for me to have a conversation uh, with him on the day that we announced the wording with the referendum working group that will uh, go forward in legislation now and uh, after a committee uh, we'll, that's the words that will be considered uh, before the Parliament uh, for a referendum at the end of uh, this year. Uh, I had the opportunity and great honour of speaking to him uh, that afternoon. He was surrounded by his loved ones and by uh, his community and he said to me uh, on that afternoon, and I'll never forget it, uh, he said to me, uh, you spoke truth. And that was one of the most heartwarming things that anyone could possibly have ever said to me in my life. Uh, he was an extraordinary leader. Uh, we mourn uh, with his people today and uh, we pay tribute uh, to a lifetime of advocating for the rights of Aboriginal people in this country. Uh, he was a key focal point of the development of the Uluru Statement from the Heart. A wonderful, gracious request to advance reconciliation in this country. And when that happened in 2017, he spoke about lighting a fire. I think that today's a day that I certainly recommit myself uh, to do everything we can to make sure that that referendum is carried at the end of this year. I pay tribute to the Malinowskis government for being the first state to have a voice uh, to their parliament here in South Australia. In light of your comments there on the voice, um, Julian Leto today said, why 
why would you want to risk the social and racial harmony of the country a reconciliation process by putting a referendum when it's not guaranteed? What do you imagine? I say that you're guaranteed to not advance it if you don't put it. He was a part of a government that was went to an election in 2019 saying they would advance these issues. Uh, they established a joint uh, committee uh, chaired by uh, Senator Patrick Dodson and Julian Lisa himself in, 2000, in the lead up uh, to uh, that process. Uh, we then had a committee established by them, Tom Karma and Marcia Langton, uh, being the leaders of that committee process, which, uh, re which was tabled and dealt with uh, by the Morrison cabinet, not once but twice, but nothing happened. Julian Lisa himself was a part of a process way back in 2014, nearly a decade ago, that spoke about uh, uh, representations being able to be made to parliament and executive government. Julian Lisa has been a part of the writing of the words uh, that uh, in the legislation uh, which was moved by our Attorney General uh, last Thursday. I say this, if not now, when? If not now, when? Indigenous people expect this to be advanced. This will be important to show respect to them, but it will also be an important moment for non-Indigenous Australia to recognise the richness and fullness of our history of sharing this continent with the oldest continuous culture on earth and also a way in which we can say to the world that Australia is a mature country that is coming to terms uh, with all of our past and that is advancing reconciliation. This is a modest request for recognition and for consultation where matters affect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And we know that when consultation occurs, you get better outcomes. That's why we need to get this done. And to not put it to the Australian people is to not advance it, is to, by definition, if you don't run on the field, you can't win, you can't succeed. Well, we will give Australians that opportunity. And I'd urge people like Julian Lisa, who has a history of genuine support for reconciliation and advancing the interests of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to not just vote yes, but campaign for yes in the referendum that will be held sometime between October and December. Prime Minister, what will your government do to address the housing availability in Australia? Well, we have a housing accord uh, that we've developed with every state and territory government as well as the private sector like the Master Builders Association, the Housing Industry Association for a million homes. We have before the parliament right now our Housing Australia Future Fund, 30,000 additional social and affordable housing dwellings, uh, which will double, which will double in the report that's been released today, which will double the amount of uh, homes that will, uh, new homes that will be built over the coming uh, few years. Uh, that will, 4,000 of them, reserved for women and children escaping domestic violence. A part of that funding going to veterans at risk of homelessness. $100 million uh, for emergency housing. Funding in there as well to fix remote housing in Indigenous communities. It's being held up by the Liberals, the Nationals and the Greens political party saying that uh, they're, they're not supporting it from different perspectives. Uh, which is why it wasn't put to a vote uh, last week. Uh, they can get on uh, with doing that. We have the Housing Supply uh, and Affordability Council being established as part of that legislation as well. We want to work with Peter's government here in South Australia, but state and territory governments right around the country to increase supply. Prime Minister. And then there. Well, if people don't, we already, of course, expend uh, considerable uh, funds on supporting uh, private rentals as well. Uh, but if that doesn't pass, the result's pretty clear. There'll be 30,000 less social and affordable housing units. Uh, we uh, have to deal with the parliament which is there. 
and I'd say to uh, the Liberal Party uh, that uh, up until Saturday they opposed cheaper electric vehicles, they've opposed our climate uh, targets of emissions net zero by 2050 and 43% by 2030. They opposed the safeguard mechanism that was their own policy. They opposed the National Reconstruction Fund that's about manufacturing jobs in outer suburbs and in regions. They have opposed every initiative that has been made. Uh, they need to reassess their position and to uh, make a contribution, uh, be constructive. Uh, that's what Australians expect of the alternative government. Last Mr. one. The Premier's uh, made some trips to China. Is that a sign that the relationship uh, is stabilising? And when do you plan to do that? Well, it's always good to have dialogue. And China is our major trading partner. Uh, I say that we will cooperate with China where we can, we'll disagree where we must, and we'll engage in our national interest. I have said that I would. Uh, accept an invitation were it to be given by President Xi. It's a positive thing uh, that I met uh, with President Xi at the G20 meeting. It's positive that my assistant trade minister uh, met uh, Senator Ayres, met his counterpart in the last week in, uh, at Hunan at the forum that was held. I expect uh, my trade minister, Don Farrell, a great South Australian, to visit uh, China uh, sometime in the coming uh, weeks or months uh, going forward and a dialogue is always a good thing and if premiers uh, in Victoria and in, uh, have just come back in Western Australia, I, I was with Premier McGowan yesterday, he's planning to visit. Obviously as a resources state it's particularly important the relationship uh, for Western Australia. Thanks we very just much. Use and then, data, does that cement the, the results seen in Oh, look, I'll, I'll leave the commentating to the commentators. Uh, what my government will continue to do is pursue a positive agenda. A positive agenda of looking after the short-term interests of Australians by dealing with the challenges that we're confronting as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine and supply chain uh, shortages around the world. Uh, we're seeing uh, inflation uh, that uh, peaked, we hope, in December and it's starting to come down. Uh, we're dealing with issues constructively, working with state and territory governments, working with the private sector to deal with that. But we're also planning for the future. That's what today's about. This is a plan that's not about a year or two, and I'll, I'll ask Pete to, to comment on this as well. Um, we are uh, developing plans like fee-free TAFE and skills to deal with, with uh, the skills shortages uh, which are, are there to be a smarter country. Uh, we're dealing with uh, building and making more things here through our National Reconstruction Fund. We're dealing with the opportunities that are there on climate change. Uh, South Australia was ahead of the game, thanks to former South Australian Labor governments. They know that the cheapest form of new energy happens to be the cleanest form of new energy as well with renewables. There's exciting prospects. What we need to do is to commercialise the opportunities and breakthroughs which, is, which are there. And one of the things that will happen as a result of our investment in high value uh, manufacturing in the defence sector is that there'll be spin-offs for other sectors as well, growth industries that will be able to benefit. So I'm really optimistic about Australia's future. I think uh, we are the best country on earth, but we can be even stronger in the future. And part of securing that though is not standing still, because if you stand still, the world will go past you. It is developing new industries, new opportunities, and that's what uh, we're trying to do. I might see people wants to add anything. Just um, a quick one on the voice, if you could just one more on the voice. I'm on the voice and then I'm yeah. probably yeah. Um, done. Julian Lesser again today said that um, Clause 2 is ahead in the saddlebag. I'm just wondering if you consider any um, changes to get... Well, I, I, I see no signs of any bipartisanship. I have not seen, I am yet to see, a positive comment uh, from the leader of the Liberal Party on these issues. Uh, what I see is uh, an attempt to, uh, to uh, undermine uh, the prospects of a successful referendum. And we know that it's hard 
I've reached out. I've met with Peter Dutton seven times. On not one of those occasions has he brought Julie and Lisa, his spokesperson, to those meetings. I understand it was also reported today that the Liberal Party are going to have a caucus meeting on Wednesday. Well, we haven't even had the committee process uh, into the legislation that we uh, we released and introduced into the parliament last Thursday yet. Uh, what I, I, I hope there is bipartisanship and I have not had uh, any suggestions of change wording. I, I haven't seen Julie and Lisa's speech. I was in Perth. I'm, I'm yet to see any actual suggestions uh, from uh, the opposition uh, for change wordings. Uh, I gave the draft wording in July of last year. We're now in April of 2023 and not a word of suggestion has been made. And the, the second uh, paragraph of the three changes going forward, the first is pretty simple, there shall be a voice. Uh, the second says they may make representations. That's what the second says, may. So that's very clear when read together as well with the third, that makes it clear that parliament uh, will determine the structure and functions uh, of the voice. So I think it's very clear. And what's important is that former Chief Justice of the High Court of Australia, uh, Justice French, uh, Justice Hain, the leading academics like Anne Toomey, all agree. Uh, we consulted very widely. Uh, we think that we've got the wording right, but if people actually have a suggestion about a change, uh, that would be uh, the first one, but I made it very clear the whole way through that I seek bipartisanship. This should not be a partisan issue. And when it is, uh, it is carried, if the Australian people vote for it uh, later this year, it will be an opportunity for a moment of national unity. Uh, well, last year, for the first time in South Australia's history, the state government facilitated free flu, shot, uh, free flu shots. And um, when it comes to the application of that this year, we'll do that in conjunction with the target advice, given the experience of last year. Never before in South Australia have uh, flu shots been free, except for last year, done by a brand new Labor government. We want to assess the data around that, get a target's advice to inform the government's decision as part of our uh, winter plan, which we anticipate to announce at the beginning of May. Would it be likely that um, it would be for some age groups? Or would it be well, yeah, it's an important question. Uh, we will make sure, in conjunction with the federal government, that flu shots are free for people over the age of 65 and for children under the age of five and others with chronic illness. Uh, we'll make sure of that. In terms of expanding beyond that, we want to make that decision in conjunction with Nicola Spurrier's advice, Atagi's advice, and also having a clear look at the experience of last year. Well, well, the, the Commonwealth made the Commonwealth made clear their plans for the rollout of the nuclear submarine program. The only thing that frustrates me sometimes when people sort of suggest that the timeline's not ambitious, that couldn't be further from the truth. Anyone who understands the the depth of complexity around this enterprise will understand that the Commonwealth timelines are very ambitious, and we have to start acting now, which is why. The Prime Minister has committed $2 billion of expenditure just in the next four years alone at preparing this site. And when will the Skills Academy open? Well, the Skills Academy is something that we're very grateful the Commonwealth has committed to as part of that memorandum of understanding, on top of dramatically increasing Commonwealth-supported university places here in South Australia. We're in active discussions with the Commonwealth about finalising the detail around both the Skills Academy and that land swap. But as the PM said, um, we've already come a long way in a short space of time by working collaboratively and that's something we'll continue to do over the coming months. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.